I'm Anna, Anna Avakian. I'm a deputy chief of party for the Civil Society in Action Project, uh, which is implemented by Counterpart International in partnership with Urban Foundation for Sustainable Development. Uh, what I like about my role is um, I'm uh, working on a technical implementation of the project, uh, leading some objectives of this project, and that's primarily focusing on the operational and programmatic part. Um, I like the fact that I am involved in um, designing and shaping technical interventions in this project. Of course, they all derived from the overall project uh, program objective objectives, but it's also great to see the interventions we have with uh, in our work with civil society organizations as well as uh, with the government, uh, and that close interaction on both sides uh, and seeing the results of uh, our uh, programming and activities we implement is what I like. Um, being hands-on, basically, working very closely with the uh, local uh, organizations, not just on a national level, but on a, uh, in the com organizations based in the communities, grassroots organizations, very nascent startup organizations, which has both its good sides, but also its, its challenges. So the, the vibrant uh, civil society in Armenia, good, uh, the way I see it is when civil society is equipped with the knowledge and data to be on to be an equal partner to the government to um, make informed decisions and to really contribute to uh, policy making in the country um, uh, and we are in this project we are working on building capacity of those civil society organizations to produce evidence-based data to do quality researches to be able to shape policy documents and provide policy recommendations to the government and to be an equal partner to the government. Uh, but it takes a lot of effort and a lot of investment and a lot of capacity building, which we still need to continue doing. Um, and I don't think it's a matter of a year or two. It is, it's a continuous process that we need to uh, continue like putting an effort into. And hopefully one day we'll get to that stage where government also will uh, recognize civil society organizations as equal partners and will proactively reach out to the uh, to those organizations for their contribution in policy making processes so it's it be, it's becoming really challenging when you need to um, build this organization uh, and institutionalize some of the uh, processes to make them sustainable uh, to help them grow and it becomes very challenging when you don't have the human resource to work with, and it's not the problem of one organization only or two organizations, but that's the landscape of civil society organizations in the communities where there is real lack of uh, qualified uh, human resource uh, who is willing to join um, NGO sector. So our uh, goal is to um, engage civil society organizations from the beginning of the process. Uh, from the design of those po uh, of those laws of those policies, um, being uh, together during the process, not to come back after it, and 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 that is when government thinks that uh, civil society organizations are always cr critical of their work because in many cases they get involved only at the end of the process. Okay, so one of the things that we do in this project is, and I think that. You know, we do it differently compared. Uh, and anyway, we do it differently is that we do we conduct uh, institutional assessment of organizations, and then we we design our technical assistance based on the real needs of this organization. So the trainings that we provide are not just a list of trainings that we think are important and that everybody should get those trainings, but we are basically designing those trainings based on the real technical gaps that they have in, in um, for example, in policy making, in designing policy papers, in conducting researches, in talking to the government, in telling their stories. So uh, really they are tailored to the, to, this, to, the, to the objective of this project. And, I, and um, 
given that you know there are a lot of organizations that do capacity building now, there are a lot of projects now that do the same capacity building of civil society organizations, I think what we do differently is that we're uh, really bringing the need and the gap together, right? So we are addressing the gaps for them to become more effective. And I think um, the other thing is that um, uh, we started to talk more openly with the, or are more constructively with the government. So there is, uh, and I can't claim that it's an, it's an achievement of our uh, project specifically, but we are able to build that relationship with the government representatives um, to come together across, uh, around one general goal and to offer our support to the government as well. So we understand that the need comes on both sides and that both sides need to be equipped with the right skills to be able to talk together constructively. That's why we're approaching, we're not just approaching or looking at civil society standalone, but we understand that the government also needs those skills to be able to um, get into a constructive dialogue with civil society organizations. That's why we're tr uh, trying to address the needs on both sides. Of course, more focus goes on civil society organizations, given the mandate of this project of, uh, and the objective of this project. But, but still, um, we're trying to uh, keep that balance of building uh, this, the right skills on both sides.